But sh that's interesting about Nikki's national friend. That must <laughs> slightly I'm, alarm you. I'm that amazed that she has one. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it must um, alarm you that, um, or bemuse you perhaps, that there's these national voting people that are saying, I, I like the Greens. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I guess at one level it does surprise me. At another level, I guess what it says, uh, well, what it says to me anyway, is that people's um, party allegiances and, and voting patterns are, are not simply an expression of class warfare or, or some deep commitment to ideology. Mm -hmm. So probably Nikki's national voting friend, um, I mean, most, I mean, I'm perhaps, I'm, I'm perhaps guessing here, but a lot of people who vote national are voting national because you know, John Key seems like a really nice man. It's not because we really believe in in this ideology of the of the small state and um, and and the the magical thinking that the unfettered uh, mm. competition between profit maximising yeah. corporates will somehow deliver the best outcomes yeah. for everyone. Yeah. So so in that it, for, for that. For that person who's who's voting yeah. national, but is not ideologically yeah. committed to that idea. Because the national party must have a lot of soft support at the moment of people yeah. that are floating voters, and so I guess the Greens are trying to get a shit, you know, win over some of that. Uh, is that part of the strategy? I mean, we literally don't have a strategy of um, the voters that are held by a particular oh. party. You know, the, uh, we're trying to target those. Okay, we we are. We're literally saying, okay, this is what we stand for. Um, here are the priorities that we have. Um, but you, you do have strategies like going into the suburbs, as the Greens call it. I mean, that's kind of a, a, a political strategy in the sense of targeting a particular type of, yeah. of voters. It's it's a it's a metaphor, not not a not a, not for um, there's a particular kind of person who lives in the suburbs that we that we want, okay. but rather. We, we understand that in order to have greater representation in Parliament and therefore greater leverage, yeah. we need to broaden, broaden our appeal. And that's where some of that change of tone has come sure. from. So, as I say, nothing about the policy has changed, yeah. um, but the, the tone has changed to, um, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, I, I guess, be one that's communicating more broadly. So, uh, as Nikki identifies, communication is something that's changed, and we've tried to become uh, more professional as a political party at, at doing that communication. So the message is not different, but the way it's communicated is different. What, what do you think would happen to that communication at, like the, if, if hypothetically the Greens did form a, like a quite close arrangement with National? Because in the sense that that outside factor is so crucial to maintaining the kind yeah. of like reliable support yeah. that you'd have to have some kind of brilliant communication strategy to mm. keep them on side. Yeah, I mean, the the I mean, I guess what I'd say, and we had that we had that issue, I guess, when we when we um, announced that we were going to pursue a, a memorandum of understanding with National, um, because there were people who who said, oh, this is a disaster, you know, and and um, the, the the this will so soften the Greens' critique of of the National government and give the National government some credibility, and you know, all of those kinds of arguments. Um, and actually, we we uh, I mean, our message was 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 plainly, you know, we we are, you know, our integrity is based on the fact that if we have a critique of the government, we will continue to advance that robustly. And I, I would say, look at my record in in the House, look, look at the speeches I've given, the campaigns that I've I've waged. I think it's pretty clear that I have not softened in any way my critique of the government. Um, but on the other hand, if there are areas where it's possible to actually get green change, which is, after all, what we're in politics for, um, then we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think that when well, I've come across a, a number of people who were concerned when we, when we went into the MOU, um, who have now changed their mind and can see that it has been a useful thing. So um, at the time when we had our AGM, where we talked about you know what what our political positioning should be. Uh, part of what we were saying is we we believe on the basis of our experience that it, it would be possible to have a, an arrangement similar to the one that we've had now, where we where we pursue areas of common ground. And there there 
was not, I think, even a single voice raised against that. So what the about, what, what MOU about? was kind of dipping your toe in the water a little bit to kind of like... Yeah. Maybe. So so you were enthu an enthusiast for this change of position, this opening the door to, to national? I was an enthusiast for the Memorandum of Understanding and I, I've, got, I've got several... Well, I, there are several areas in that MOU where I have worked with National Party people, so the... But, know, but when the AGM came to have this opening the door policy to national, you were enthusiastic about that? Um, the, well, let's, let's not misrepresent the position. It's, it's not opening the door. Well, it's not absolutely what, shutting the door. Yeah. The, well, the latch is still that's on. What, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, Materia Turek keeps talking about opening the door to national rather than keeping it shut. Right, a crack. A crack. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, and, and, you know, the, the position that we came to was, was a consensus decision of the party. Yeah. And so, so all of us, in fact, are mm. OK about living with that position. OK, except for um, Catherine Delahunty, of course. She would resign, she said, if it came about that um, the logical conclusion of that position came about and there was actually a Green, minister, green MP in, as a minister. Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't, I haven't actually seen the, the, the interview with Catherine, yeah. so I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what she said. Oh, that's pretty much um, exactly what she said. <laughs> but um, she'd resign from Parliament. I mean, from from my point of view, um, the, the the situation of of us being in a relationship where we effectively assisted National to have power by mm. forming a coalition or giving confidence and supply or yeah. even abstaining on confidence mm. and supply. According to our policy, that would only occur if we if we achieved substantial gains mm. um, on our on our priority mm. um, uh, policies. Um, and um, but isn't that a bit uh, wishy-washy? And, and we're, we're saying that's highly unlikely. But isn't that a bit wishy-washy? Because you don't really say these are the exact things that would need to be, except for yeah. I think is it food labelling. Country of origin food labelling, I, I yeah, think no, the Greens have announced that's, not, that's the one deal breaker for no, a national. It's, it's not a deal breaker. It's, a, it's, it's not? It's, it's a pretty high priority. But the, the highest priorities that we have set yeah. are the, those priorities around jobs and rivers yeah. and kids. But where's the with, sort of litmus with the test? Attendant detail of what that? would they have to do to. The, I mean, there isn't a litmus test in, in, the, in the sense of there, there is a specific thing that they have to do. Like you the, don't have any conditions then? Well, the condition is substantial progress on, on our priority policies. But that's kind of vague. That's sort of New Zealand first sort of talk, isn't it? No, I, I don't think it is. I mean, I, 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 think, um, I think people uh, can clearly see what our priorities are. We've talked about those a lot. We've announced that position early. We've announced the priorities early. We've given people a lot of opportunity mm. to, to get the sense of those things that we are prioritising. We've said it's got to be mm. substantial progress. And, what is and, and even after negotiation of a deal mm. that the negotiators think mm. represents substantial progress, that would then still have mm. to get mm. a consensus decision of a special general mm. meeting of the party to but, approve it. But what about the voters of the Green Party? Where do they get their say? Because they won't, don't get to see this before the election. You're basically taking this into the back rooms and then into a party caucus, oh, no, sorry, not a party caucus, a wider party yeah. um, meeting, and the voters might find that uh, they are undercut and they might get something they're not voting, they didn't want to vote for. Have you just highlighted a problem with all the coalition deal making that happens yeah, in New Zealand I, though I rather so. than... Yeah. Well I think, I mean, I mean you, might, you might think that Bryce, but what I, what I would say is uh, we have built I think a solid reputation of um, being a party that is very much policy driven, mm. um, standing absolutely by our policy, um, we have not changed any, any of our, our, our Policy um, to I mean I know that there's a that there is a um, a discourse that I don't share that suggests that the Greens have moved to the centre. I, I don't think that's true at all. In fact, um, but the, the the what I would say is that the evidence is we have been um, uh, extremely true to our word, okay. um, and that voters will either trust that we will continue mm. to be true to mm. our word okay. um, and that, uh, the, that a deal with National is unlike, or highly unlikely mm. um, because of the, the, the relatively small chance of, of achieving substantial progress on the policies we've prioritised. Or they'll say, well, the Greens haven't given an absolute, um, absolute commitment and therefore I can't vote for them. And actually what the polls are saying, as you've identified, mm. is that for the most part, there seems to be a growing group of voters mm. 
who actually are, are comfortable with 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 the commitment that we've given. Mm -hmm. But could some of that support be on the basis of the, the party campaigning recently saying a vote for Greens is a vote for the change of government? Um, it, it could be. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard yeah. to to, yeah. to say what what the sure. what the forces are. But there does I mean, seem I, to be a I contradiction. Think, doesn't I think there? certainly. No, I mean, we 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 just we just we just come from this from a point of view of, of saying, actually, we're about getting our policies mm. implemented, and the point of view that says. Um, OK, you shouldn't touch National with, with a barge pole. So if they turn out to lead the next government, um, well, that bad luck, and we'll just have to wait another three years before we, before we can do anything. Actually, that's not where we come from at all. And a lot of the issues that, that we highlight, the, the kids living in poverty, for example, unemployment, the crisis in our, in our fresh, mm. fresh water and on climate change, all of those things that are our policy priorities actually... I think it's unethical to, to say, well, we're just not going to do anything about that for another three years. Okay. Um, so, so I think there's, there's actually a sort of a moral imperative that, that applies to a party like ours to do what we can, regardless of actually how the cards fall, to get our policies implemented. Okay. So that's an argument for even having um, Green MPs as ministers in a national-led government? You wouldn't be unhappy well, to be a minister. You'd be quite happy to be a minister of conservation. I presume that would be the sort of portfolio you'd like. Well, uh, national... if, if, if we're talking about a hypothetical situation oh. where it's a, a national-led government where we have been able to achieve such substantial um, oh. you know, buy-in to our policies, so oh. national has abandoned many of its current oh. policies oh. Um, that, it's, that it's fighting the election campa oh. well, campaign on to the extent that they're campaigning on policy at all, of course, mm. um, in, order, in order to accommodate us. And well, then I think ministerial yeah. positions actually I mean, you know, the, they, they, they give you the opportunity oh. to, to, to advance our policies sure. even more. So as the